Hi, fourth grade. This is Miss Wilson again, coming to you with another math lesson for today. Our objective today will be that we will be able to use place value understanding to decompose the smaller units up to three times using the standard algorithm. So there go that vocabulary word again, decompose. And in math, decompose means to, yes, break apart. So we're going to be able to break apart larger numbers into smaller numbers in order to subtract up to three times in one problem. So let's begin. Hi there. Let's read the subtraction problem together. 31,486 minus 2,642. Watch as I draw a tape diagram labeling the whole, the known part, and the unknown part using a variable, A. You try. Okay, so we're going to label this tape diagram. So our top number, our biggest number is always our total. And our total is going to cover the entire diagram. We know one part. The part that we are subtracting from it is 2,642. But we do not know the other part of the tape diagram. So when we do not know um, a part, we use a variable. And a variable just means unknown. We don't know what this is yet. And we're going to use algorithm to figure out what that variable is and replace it with an actual number. Now let's see if we are ready to subtract. Look across the digits. We need to look across the top number to see if we have enough units in each column. Let's start with the ones. Are there enough ones in the top number to subtract the ones in the bottom number? Yes, I have enough. I have six. I can take away two. Then we go to our tens. Does my total or my top number have enough tens to subtract out my, my partial? Uh, yes, I have eight. I can definitely take away four. Then we go to our hundreds. I only have four hundreds. I cannot take away six. Put up four fingers, not take away six. No, I don't have enough. So somewhere I'm going to have to decompose to get enough. Four hundreds is less than six hundreds. There are not enough hundreds to subtract. That's right. When we don't have enough hundreds to subtract, we can unbundle one thousand to make ten hundreds. Look how we have zero thousands and fourteen hundreds now. Now we can subtract in the hundreds place. See how I recorded that? Now it's your turn to record the unbundling. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing. I don't have enough hundreds. So I'm going to take one from my thousands. So if I take one from one, that leaves me zero. And then whenever I do borrow from another place value, that automatically gives me 10. So now I'm going to add my 10 to how many hundreds I already have. I have 400, so that's going to give me 14. Now look at the thousands place. Are there enough thousands in the top number to subtract the thousands in the bottom number? So as you can see, we have a line through our one. So one is not the number we're going to use. The number above it is the one we're going to use. And I have zero. If I have zero, do I have enough to take out two? No. So that tells me I'm going to have to borrow. Zero thousands is less than two thousands. So we don't have enough thousands to subtract. That's right. So we can unbundle a ten thousand. Look how we have two ten thousands and ten thousands now. Now we are ready to subtract in the thousands place. Zerner, record the unbundling. Okay, so we're going to do exactly what they did. We're going to borrow. So because I'm in the thousands place, I have to borrow from the ten thousands place. I have to go up one place value. So if I take one from the three, they're going to leave me two. And then remember, every time we take one from a place value, that actually gives us 10 in our hand. 
And how many thousands do I already have? Zero. So 10 plus zero is 10. Now look at the 10 thousands place. Are we ready to subtract in the 10 thousands place? Yes, when there's no number in that place value, uh, we, we're going to assume that it's zero. So I have two. Can I take away zero? Yes. Yes, there are enough ten thousands to subtract. Look at our subtraction algorithm. Are we ready to subtract now? Well, we have enough units in each column, so we are ready to subtract. And check it out. Since we made sure that we are ready to subtract in every place value, we can start with any column. You could start by subtracting two ones from six ones. Or you could subtract starting with the ten thousands. Go ahead and solve in the subtraction algorithm now. Okay, so I know he told you you can start in any place value. But we as fourth graders, we always start in the ones place value. We add starting in the ones place value. We subtract in the starting in the ones place value. We multiply starting in the ones place value. Okay, so we're going to start in the ones. Six, six minus two, four. Eight minus four, four. Fourteen minus six, eight. Ten minus two, eight. Two minus zero, two. 31,486 minus 2,642 equals 28,844. In the tape diagram, we used A for the unknown. What is the value of A? So now we know what our missing part is. So we can replace that, value, that variable because a variable means it's unknown. We can replace that variable with the actual number that goes there, which is 28,844. A equals 28,844. Let's try a new problem now. 210,290 minus 45,720. Label the tape diagram to model this problem. Okay, so as we said before, our largest number, when we're subtracting, it's going to be our total. So as you see, 210,290 is my largest number. So that's my total. That's how much uh, my two partials will be worth. I know one of my partial, which is 45,720. So I don't know my other partial. So that tells me that I'm going to use a variable. And this time, we're just going to use the variable B. Does not matter what variable you use, letter A through Z, doesn't matter. Just when you put a alphabet there, which is a variable, it means I do not know how much that is worth. Now that we've set up our tape diagram, let's solve. Think you can solve it all on your own? Unbundle as needed to get ready to subtract, and then subtract. Okay, so I always start in my ones place first, and I'm going to look at my total, which is my top number, and see if each place value has enough where I can subtract from it. So I'm starting my ones. I have zero ones. I only ha I have to take away zero, so I have enough. My tens, I have nine tens. I have to take away two. I have enough. My hundreds, I have 12, I have two hundreds, and I have to take away seven. I don't have enough. So that means that I need to go to my next one to borrow. But my next one has nothing. So I can't borrow from there. So that means I have to go on to my next place value that has a value there and take from there. So I'm going to borrow this one. This is a 10,000. And then it's going to become thousands. Now, did that help me in my hundreds place? No, I still don't have any in my hundreds place. But at least now I have 10 in my thousands place where I can take one from there. 
So I'm going to take one from my thousands place, which will give me 10 in my hand. And I'm going to add it to how many hundreds I already have. 10 plus 2 is 12. Okay, now I'm going to keep going because the only thing I know now is that I can subtract my hundreds place. So I have 9,000. Can I take away 5,000? Yes. I have zero 10,000. Can I take away four? No, I have zero. So that means I need to borrow again. So I'm going to borrow from my 100,000th place. I'm going to take away one. When I take away that one, that one becomes 10 in my hand. And now in my um, 10,000th place value, I have zero already. So 10 plus zero will give me 10. Then I'm going to check my 100,000th place. And now I have one, but I'm taking away zero. So I'm definitely ready to add. And then I always start in my what place value? Ones. So I'm going to subtract 0 minus 0, 0. 9 minus 2, 7. 12 minus 7, 5. 9 minus 4, 9 minus 5, 4. I'm giving away the answer early. 10 minus 4, 6. And 1 minus 0, 1. 210,290 minus 45,720 equals 164,570. That's right. So what is the value of our variable B? So the variable of B will actually be uh, the other partial that I came up with, 164,570. I can now replace the B, which is unknown, with the partial that I know is known now. Let's solve this last one in our notes. We're working on Mission 1, Lesson 14. We always start by reading the problem carefully. Mrs. Johnson needed to purchase a large order of computer supplies for her company. She was allowed to spend $859,239 on computers. However, she ended up only spending $272,650. How much money was left? What information do we know? What is the question asking? So before we get started, we always have to go with what information do I know? What do I not know? And what, what are they asking me? Now, I'm going to read it again. Ms. Johnson needs to purchase a large order of computer supplies for her company. She was allowed to spend $859,239 on computers. Okay, so I know she was allowed to spend $859,239. However, she ended up only spending $272,650. So I know, again, this is what I know, that Ms. Johnson only spent $272,650. How much money was left? Now, I don't know how much money was left. I can't do that math in my head, and my problem did not tell me how much was left. We know Mrs. Johnson can spend $859,239 and we know that she only spent $272,650. Now, draw a tape diagram to represent the information in the problem. Label the whole, the known part, and the unknown part using a variable. All right, so we're gonna draw our tape diagram. Okay, so we're gonna draw our tape diagram so we know a tape diagram is a, a rectangle box, okay? We're going to enter in the things that we do know and the things that we don't know. So we know the total she was allowed to spend was $859,239. Then we know how much that she did spend, so we know this we know how much she did spend and that was two thousand two hundred and seventy two thousand six hundred and fifty 
Oh, you can't see where I wrote it at the top. Now, what I don't know is how much was left. And I'm going to use the variable L for left. Okay, so we, we definitely drew our tape diagram. All right. I'll draw my tape diagram like this. And label the hole. Eight hundred fifty nine thousand two hundred thirty nine dollars for the total amount that Mrs. Johnson can spend. I'll make a part like this for what she spent and label that two hundred seventy two thousand six hundred fifty dollars. The unknown part is the amount she had left. So I'll choose the variable L for what is left. Check your work. It's okay if you used a different variable. Lucky for us, we used the same variable. What subtraction problem are we solving? Write that here now. All right, so we're going to do our subtraction problem. I'm going to use my tape diagram to help me write my problem. So my total always goes on the top, because remember, we do our problems vertically. And then I'm going to subtract the, away the partial that I know. So that's how we will set up our subtraction. 859,239 minus 272,650. That's the problem we need to solve. Make sure that's what it says in your notes here. All right, that's definitely what we have in our notes. We're going to solve now using the subtraction algorithm. Let's start by getting it ready. Move across the digits and check if there are enough in each column to subtract. Unbundle when needed. Okay, so we're going to do this together. And remember, we always start in what place value? Yes, always the one. So we're going to use our total to decide whether or not we have enough in each place value to actually subtract. So in my start with my ones. 9 minus 0, I have enough to subtract. 3 minus 5, I do not have enough, so I need to borrow. So I'm going to borrow 1 from my hundreds place, which would leave me 1. I'm going to take that 10 and add it to my tens place, so that's going to give me 13. Now my tens is ready to subtract. Now I go to my hundreds. I have 1 minus 6. I can't do that. So that tells me that, again, I need to, un so I'm going to stop saying borrow, but I need to unbundle. I need to unbundle my thousands place. So I'm going to take one from my thousands place, which will leave me eight, and I'm going to take that 10 and add it to my hundreds place, which now gives me 11, because 10 plus one is 11. So then I go to my thousands place. I have eight. Can I subtract out two? Yes. Then I go to my 10,000. I have five. Can I take away seven? No, that's not enough. Put up five fingers, take away seven. Do you have enough? No. So that tells me I'm going to have to unbundle. So I'm going to unbundle my hundred thousands and take away one. So that means I'm going to have seven left. Now that gives me 10 10 thousands in my hand. I already have five 10 thousands there. So 10 plus five is 15. Now can I subtract in my 10 thousands place? Yes. Then I'm going to go to my 100 thousands place. I have seven. Can I take away two? Yes. That tells me that I am now ready to subtract. All right, so we have what they have. Let's keep going. Look across the digits. 
We are ready to subtract. Go ahead and subtract now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and subtract. And I always start in what place value? Yes, I want. So nine take away zero. 13 take away five. 11 take away six. Eight take away two. 15 take away seven. Seven take away two. Oh, what did I? Uh, look at me. Eight take away two is six. And 15 take away seven is eight. Moving too fast, moving too fast. Now let's check our answer using addition. We need to add our answer to this number to see if it adds up to the whole. Go ahead and do that in your notes now. So the best thing about subtraction is before... 586,589 plus 272,650. 859,239. That's the whole. Our answer is correct. Check your addition. This problem was a word problem, so we need to finish by saying our answer as a statement. Remember, what was our question? How much money was left? So Ms. Johnson had $586,589 left. The question asked, how much money was left? I'm going to write $586,589 was left. Check your work now, making sure that your statement has the same number in it and makes sense for this question. So please remember when we're writing our answer sentence, we have to have a complete sentence. Everything that, that we are doing um, when we write has to be complete sentences. So when I look at the way they have it written, I don't see my subject who is Ms. Johnson. Thanks for taking it away with me and working hard to subtract. Keep it going in the Tower of Power. Okay, let's do another problem together uh, before we go. So remember when we subtract, we have to have our numbers written vertically. Our, our place value has to line up, okay? So we wrote, we wrote this problem because at the top is written horizontally. So we wrote, we wrote it vertically. And then now we need to look across the top to see if we're ready to subtract. So we start in our ones, nine minus zero. I can subtract in my ones. Then I go to my tens, three minus eight. I can't take away eight from three, so I'm not ready to subtract. That tells me that I have to unbundle. So to get myself ready to subtract in the 10 spot, I have to unbundle one of the ones in the 100 spot. So I have three, and I'm going to take one and unbundle it. So that's going to leave me two. When I unbundle it, that gives me 10 in my hand. I already have three tens there. So 10 plus three is. 13. Okay, so that means that I now need to look at my hundreds because we just corrected our tens, so our tens are ready. Okay, so I have two hundreds and I need to take away five. That tells me that I'm going to have to unbundle a thousand. So I have six thousands. If I take away one, that's going to leave me five. Okay, and that's gonna give me 10 in my hand. So I have 10 in my hand, and I already have two in my hundreds place. So 10 plus two is 12. So that means I'm ready to do, ready to subtract in my hundreds place. Then I go to my thousands, I have five, subtract five, 
I can definitely do that. Then I go to my 10,000s and to take away my imaginary zero here, I'm able to do that. So let's go ahead and subtract. Nine minus zero, nine. 13 minus eight, five. 12 minus five, seven. Five minus five, zero. And two minus zero, two. All right, good job working with me. All right, good job, fourth grade. So remember, our objective today was that we will be able to decompose into smaller units using the standard algorithm. And remember, standard algorithm is just a vocabulary word that means just the normal way of doing math. So excellent job. Until next time. Bye.